Hey there, welcome to Decode. In this episode, we are zeroing in on Windows Embedded Compact or Windows CE. This was a go-to operating system throughout 2000s, powering everything from handheld PCs to GPS navigators and even Windows mobile phones. Today, I'll walk you through the shell examples Microsoft provided to device manufacturers, showcasing the flexibility and customizability of Windows CE. I've got my hands on some copies of Platform Builder, an impressive tool that integrates with Visual Studio, allowing you to build your own Windows CE images. This OS is a world apart from desktop windows, boasting a modular design and a unique components tree. It's fascinating because unlike desktop windows, Windows CE is designed to be flashed onto a ROM. So compared to how the desktop windows works, the Platform Builder produced nk.bin file, which is supposed to be flashed to your board. This file contains the whole system including files and registry. And thankfully, Windows CE supports x86 architecture, meaning that I can and I will build it for the desktop computer. First up, the standard shell. Last seen in Windows CE 7, it's quintessential Windows CE experience available from the very beginning of Windows CE history, complete with the taskbar, start menu and file explorer. It feels familiar since it's a clone of the real desktop window shell called Explorer. It also has the classic control panel with the regular and kind of familiar control panel applets. In Windows CE version 7, you can find a few really new and interesting things. Microsoft introduced an XAML-based control panel that really looks different. The design of the XAML version represents the design of the desktop windows at the time. We can see that it's a complex scalomorphism just like it was at the time in Windows 7. Compared to the previous versions of Windows CE, Microsoft also replaced the media apps. These are now in XAML 2 and have the same design and touch-friendly interface. Now, let's talk about customizations. Microsoft didn't hold back, providing samples like the XP Lite design. It gives each window the nostalgic Windows XP look and feel. This is basically an example explaining how to modify the standard Windows design. Then there is the XAML dialogs customization. This feature basically replaces all of the system dialogs with the customizable XAML interface. Now let's go ahead and visit Windows CE 2013, which was the last version of Windows CE. Microsoft took a different path here, dropping the standard shell and keeping only the very basic examples. This happened due to the evolution of consumer preferences with the rise of smartphones. This shell is called Min Shell and it has nothing but an example taskbar with a start menu. The start menu consists only of the command prompt and you can use it to start the applications. Under the hood, Microsoft still provides APIs like trace support for the complete shell experience. However, this shell does not implement this API and this option is only kept for the manufacturers who would like to implement such shells by themselves. Now, let's move to the next shell from Windows CE. It's called Thin Client Shell. It's designed for the enterprise sector and it's focused on providing remote access. If you don't know what is a thin client, it's a cheap computer with the cheapest components with the very basic I.O. Its idea is usually to make the bridge between the server and, for example, a supermarket's cashier workplace using remote access, because it would be much more expensive to buy a normal computer for each cashier, while a thin client just provides direct access to their user profile on a single server. So, after booting into this build, I see that teal background, which reminds me of some old times. After pressing the escape button, the system asks me to configure a remote desktop connection. Unfortunately, I am unable to test the remote access because Windows C does not have the Ethernet drivers that will be compatible with the Ethernet that's emulated by the VMware virtual machine. It says that we can also press F2, which will open the settings panel. There are some basic 
basic settings like the device name and factory reset. The second tab includes screen resolution and screen saver settings. I tried to change the resolution, however, the video driver I am using is very simple and has no resolution change option. The control panel tab is basically another control panel implementation that shows the applets we have already seen. Lastly, the XAML shell is available in both Windows CE 7 and 2013 versions. It's clear that Microsoft aimed to transition from the classic Win32 to a more contemporary XAML interface. It includes the XAML components we reviewed earlier except Internet Explorer. This is an interesting implementation with XAML for the touchscreen. I believe this is a close ancestor of Windows Phone 7 Internet Explorer. By the way, Windows CE 7 has a complete multi-touch and gestures support unlike the previous versions. You can find that some built-in components now have kinetic scrolling, like Internet Explorer. Actually, it's implemented on the engine level, so you'll find the kinetic scroll support in the classic version or even in the help application. Platform Builder also offers a variety of themes for the shell, letting you customize the UI to your liking. And that's it for this video. If you like the content, hit subscribe. Want to support the channel, consider using the buy me a coffee button. And if you are hungry for more content like this, drop a comment below with the ideas. Thank you for watching this video.